Hello, welcome back to my channel. This week, I'm gonna bring you around a few days in New York City. But before we get started, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up so that way we can keep on growing. Now I have a lot of food to eat and a lot of shows to see. So let's go. To begin our multi-day adventure, we headed over to Gomi, which means little bear in Korean. As you would assume, their menu had plenty of Korean options, but they also had some Spanish and Brazilian foods. We ordered the cheesy corn, oven-baked burrata, seafood pancake, and Brazilian cheese bread. My favorite thing that we ordered was the seafood pancake, but it was a bit fishy, so if you aren't into that, I would definitely try the burrata. Overall, this was a good spot if you wanted to grab a drink and have some good food. Next, we went to CMB for lunch, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite spots. I ordered this vegetable and mozzarella sandwich. It was served on a sourdough loaf, but the menu said it was supposed to come on a long roll, which I think would have made it a little bit easier to eat. However, when the ingredients of the sandwich are good, it doesn't matter how messy you get. I mean, the bread's homemade. I can't complain. My friend also had this epic grilled cheese that she enjoyed, and I also ordered this cheesy muffin, which was just outstanding. And lastly, I washed it all down with some black iced coffee. Then we decided to head over to the TKTS booth in Midtown to try and get some last minute Broadway tickets. We ended up getting to see Little Shop of Horrors, which was a show that I've wanted to see for a while, and it definitely did not disappoint. It was quirky and fun, and I just loved the props, set, music, and well, basically everything. <laughs> If you're in New York and you just want to see any Broadway show, I highly recommend checking out the TKTS booth in the heart of Times Square. After the show, for a late dinner, we headed over to one of my favorite Italian spots, Little Frankie's. We ordered two items that I pretty much always want on the table when I go, their famous lemon pasta and their whole roasted eggplant, which is cooked in their pizza oven. This pasta is bright and indulgent and the eggplant is creamy and melts in your mouth. Also, they have their full menu available until the wee hours of the morning. So this place always draws a crowd any time of the day. Also. Sadly, they only have the eggplant for dinner. So if you happen to be visiting New York during the daytime, I would definitely stick around for dinner just so that way you could taste it. The next day we stopped by DeVille for some treats. I got an iced coffee with coffee jelly and we both ordered these beautiful toasts. Mine was with black sesame and cream cheese and my friend had the berry and cream cheese. I would definitely go back to this spot and try more on their menu, but it is a bit pricey. I think there might be a bit of an aesthetic dax because clearly their presentation was gorgeous. Also, if you've never had coffee jelly or black sesame, I highly recommend trying jelly in a drink. In this case, it was was a bit hard to get it through the straw because typically I've had it at a boba shop, but the concept is as you'd imagine. It's coffee kind of made into something that's like gelatin. Could be made out of gelatin or it could be made out of a plant-based gelatin option. And then for black sesame, it's just a flavor you really need to taste if you haven't already. If you like sesame seeds in general, then you'd probably like black sesame. So let me know if you try either of those if you haven't already. We went to our next spot with two things in mind, peanut noodles and dumplings. We ordered the pork and cabbage dumplings along with the chicken and chive dumplings. We also got two orders of peanut noodles because we just couldn't decide between the wheat or rice noodles. Next time I stop by, I think I would pick the rice noodles over the wheat noodles, but both are great options. You really can't beat the price of this spot and it seemed to be a local favorite. So it is definitely worth stopping by if you are looking for some delicious cheap eats in New York City. For a little pick-me-up on the hot day we were having in New York City, we decided to go to my favorite boba shop and I got my typical order, which is unsweetened oolong tea with their house-made strawberry boba. Cheers! At night, we saw a comedy show at a spot I've been wanting to check out called Club Coming. It was loads of fun and the venue doesn't only do comedy. So if you're interested, I'll have their website linked below if you want to see what else they have. After the show, we headed to an absolutely incredible dinner at Dirt Candy. Now, if you are even remotely interested in vegetable forward dining, you must go here. I've only had their tasting menu, which rotates. So that's what we had on this evening and it was incredible. They nailed the flavor, originality, presentation, and place it felt like I was tasting familiar foods for the first time and they do not skimp on the details. They casually handed us these beet caramels as we left and they were just simply amazing. The next morning we went to another favorite spot of mine, Yellow Rose, for some breakfast tacos. Yellow Rose is a Texas inspired restaurant and their food reflects that. We each ordered two tacos and I got the migas which has tortillas cooked into the eggs and a potato and egg taco. This is one of those places that I will always be in the mood for. I've gone a countless amount of times Times and it just never disappoints. On the weekends when they have their breakfast tacos, they also have rotating donut and collage specials as well as some usuals. All that you need to know is that the donut was warm and the collage made you feel like you were at your grandmother's house catching up over a cup of coffee. So yeah, it was a good meal. 
Then we headed back over to the theater district because I actually won lottery tickets to see the Book of Mormon. If you don't know how the Broadway lottery works, you can enter online and they let you know usually the day before if you won discounted tickets. I was lucky enough to score two tickets for these insane orchestra seats. Oh, and not to mention, the show was amazing. After the show, we headed over to the West Village where we grabbed this ginormous slice of pizza from Artichoke Basils. Now, we did ask them to cut one slice in half just because it's so big, you pretty much could share one slice if you're not that hungry. And as you might have guessed, the slice actually has artichoke on it. It's kind of like an artichoke Alfredo, and it's really good. If you're looking to stray from a classic New York slice, then I would totally check this spot out. After a pizza, we headed next door to Cafe Reggio for a little pick-me-up. I ordered a minty mocha and it hit the spot. Now, Cafe Reggio has a rich history with some very impressive facts. So comment down below if you want me to come back and make a short or long form video on this place. But for now, just know that they were the first cafe in America to serve a cappuccino. Next, we went to a spot that feels typical New York in the sense that it's a restaurant solely dedicated to rice pudding. Now, I have never really been a rice pudding person, but I think that rice to riches really changed my mind. I got the tiramisu flavor and I would totally go back to try more. They have an impressive amount of options for a food that I've only ever associated with school lunches and nursing homes. So maybe I need to rethink my opinion of rice pudding and make some more space for it in my life. But really, it was pretty good. Later that night, it was time for some more live entertainment. We headed over to Comedy Cellar, which is one of the most popular comedy clubs in New York City. They do have you put your phone in a packing envelope, so that way no one's using it during the show, which I am a big fan of. This was an awesome lineup because we were even able to see a few comedians that we actually recognized, which was pretty cool. There is a two item minimum, so we ordered fries and chips to go with our drinks to meet their requirements, which obviously I don't have a clip of because my phone was in a packing envelope. If you're interested in comedy, it's a cool spot, so just make sure you reserve your tickets ahead of time and get there early. They are known for a dysfunctional entry process, so you don't want to be left missing your spot. On our way home for the evening, we decided to round off the day a New York way with a slice of pizza from Joe's. Now, Joe's is a fan favorite among most New Yorkers for having the best classic New York slice. And well, it's my favorite New York slice. If you're trying to figure out why Joe's might sound familiar to you, it's also known as the pizza place in Spider-Man because even Peter Parker agrees. The next morning, we went to a Malaysian restaurant for breakfast. I really enjoy trying a bunch of new foods here and I'm itching to go back to explore more of the menu. Everything was really flavorful and we were both super impressed with our iced coffee and iced tea in these fun little bags, which appropriately said certified awesome. If you're looking to try Malaysian food, then this is totally a good spot. Oh, and if you're wondering what this green sandwich is, it's Kaya butter toast. And the dish might be one of my new favorites. Or maybe it's just my newfound love for pandan, which, if you don't know, is a tropical plant. And to me, it kind of tastes like vanilla, but more fun. Next, we headed out on foot to visit the African burial ground. According to their website, this is the oldest and largest known excavated burial ground in North America for both free and enslaved Africans, and it serves as a reflection on the history of slavery in New York. Unfortunately, the inside was closed on this day, but it is a free exhibit, so if you're in Lower Manhattan, it's worth checking out. Or if it's closed when you go, the outside was beautiful just to walk around and be able to read some of the plaques about the history of slaves in New York and America. Next, we headed out on a little adventure to pick up lunch from two different spots and then take it over to Governor's Island for a little picnic. Our first pickup spot was at Tony's Rice Rolls, and then we headed over to Fongon, which is the oldest tofu shop in New York. Once we acquired the goods, we boarded a ferry and set sail to Governor's Island, which also, fun fact, the ferries in New York are the same price as a subway ride. When we got to the island, we headed to find a spot to enjoy lunch. From Tony's, we ordered rice rolls with vegetables and egg, and then we had one order of rice rolls with just chicken. I like the vegetable with egg better and I think that might have been the consensus between the both of us. I think it was just because there was more to it and the chicken was just chicken and rice roll. But that being said, the rice rolls do stand on their own pretty well. You just want to make sure you add your sauces so that way all of the flavors come together. After we finished these up, we decided to go for a little walk and we stumbled on a bunch of lounge chairs that looked out to the best view of Lady Liberty herself. So we hung out there for a bit and then we dug into our tofu treats. We got a tofu pudding and rice cakes. Now, 
Overall, I think my palette might need some developing before I can appropriately appreciate this spot. The tofu in the tofu pudding was silky and delicate, and I really liked it. So I would totally go back just to buy a block of tofu, but I think I might need to try some more adjacent foods before having either of these dishes again, because it is the oldest tofu shop in New York. So there has to be a reason it's been in business since 1933. After we finished up on Governor's Island, we headed back to Manhattan to have dinner at Via Corota, which is an Italian restaurant that I have been itching to go to. We started with a burrata, which came with an incredible caponade and marinated zucchini, and then the burrata was topped with this basil oil. Mm. It was delicious. Then we got fried zucchini, and to my surprise, they were served like shoestring fries, and it was just absolutely immaculate. This mound of zucchini heaven was perfect. Then we got their cacio e pepe, which is the only dish I've had from here because it is one of my favorites in the city. And then we also ordered their pesto special, and both were just dreamy. Then to round off the night, because we just had to see some more live entertainment, we went to my favorite jazz club, New York City Smalls. Now, if you have any appreciation for jazz or even just live music, this club is a must. It's an intimate setting with some of today's best jazz artists. We even got a surprise visit from Johnny O'Neill, who's a jazz legend and was even inducted into the Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame. Also, sit front row if you can, it's just truly magical. Then the next day for dinner, we went to Her Name is Han, which is a Korean restaurant. I've been wanting to try this spot for a while and it did not disappoint. We ordered Korean fried chicken, a kimchi pancake, sweet and sour chicken fried rice, and an army stew. They also served panchan, which is a collective word in Korean for side dishes. They're often served to complement a meal, so we had some kimchi, some tofu and greens, some potato, and some dried squid. It was really good. The food and everything was just amazing. It was a Monday night and the place was packed. Everything we ordered, I would order again, and I also would go back to try even more of their menu. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know if you've been to any of the places that I went to in this video or if you plan to. But thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up so that way we can keep on growing. And I will be sure to catch you next time. Bye.